Hey there everyone, Far North Racing here. So today I've got myself a channel first. After years of making these videos, a company has finally taken notice of me and they've sent me a product to review. I make a video in which I give my honest opinion of the thing and I get to keep it once the review is done. No strings attached. This is a pretty common social media marketing practice and I've always wondered about the integrity of these kinds of reviews. As it turns out, completely legit. I was under no pressure one way or the other to say anything good or bad about the product. All that they cared about was that I release a video. So. Here we are. So today I'm reviewing the Thermal Master Thor Thermal Imager. This is a handheld high resolution thermal camera. If you've never seen one of these before, this is a camera, but it sees in the infrared instead of visible light, meaning that it sees heat. This lets you point the camera at something and see exactly what temperature it is, where the hot spots and cold spots are, as the camera renders temperature gradients as visible color gradients. This turns out to be tremendously useful for troubleshooting certain types of problems, as quite frequently when something goes wrong with a mechanical or electrical device, there's a thermal signature associated with that problem that you can't see with a naked eye, but it pops right out at you when viewed with a thermal imager. For example, let's say you have a leak in your roof. The rain leaking in is colder than the house, so it makes a cold spot where the water pools on the ceiling. Point the thermal imager at the underside of the ceiling, and the leak is immediately obvious because of that temperature difference. The camera is extremely sensitive and can pick up extremely small temperature differences. Here I touch the siding on my house for a split second and you can clearly see the warm spot where the heat from my hand warmed up the plastic. In this picture, I walked barefoot across my lawn and my footprints are visible in the grass. They don't last very long as the heat dissipates, but that brief moment of contact as I walked along was enough to be visible and show my footprints. As a more practical use, gaps in home insulation can be found the same way. Winter heating bills too high? Scan the outside of the house looking for hot spots and you can directly see where the heat is going because there is a missing piece of insulation. Here's a picture I took of the outside of my new shop. The shop is insulated, but I have a spot framed for a window that I haven't installed yet. And because it's not installed, that space isn't insulated. That lack of insulation shows up right away on the thermal camera. Let's say you're troubleshooting some electronic equipment. Failing components or bad solder joints will typically get hot, but not necessarily hot enough to smoke or scorch their surroundings or give off a smell where you can find it that way. So instead, point your thermal camera at it and the hot spots are immediately obvious. This specific picture is stock footage because I don't have any failing electronics to troubleshoot and take a picture of, but you get the idea. If you are careful, you can even use the camera to take direct temperature readings off of something. This can get tricky because different materials give off different amounts of IR light at a given temperature, such that two materials at the same temperature might look different in the camera. This is called emissivity, and to get an accurate temperature reading, the camera must be calibrated with the correct emissivity value for the material you're looking at, and tuning that value can take some trial and error. But for 90% of the use cases for a thermal imager, the exact temperature and so the emissivity value don't matter. What you typically want is the gradient, and that will be visible no matter how accurate the emissivity value is. These cameras are super useful for home inspectors, electronics troubleshooting, automotive repair, HVAC work, and anywhere else where being able to see an otherwise hidden temperature gradient can be useful. And like a lot of these technologies, once you have access to it, you start discovering use cases for it that you hadn't thought of previously. Now, if you're thinking that sounds expensive, historically you'd be right. FLIR Teledyne is the top manufacturer of thermal viewers, and their handheld viewer has traditionally cost on the order of 3,000 American dollar dues, which is far beyond the price range of mere mortals. If you're a professional home inspector, it's an essential part of doing business, and so it'll pay for itself in no time at all, but for some rando looking to cut down his heat bill, the cost of entry has been pretty steep. The alternative solution to this point has been something like the FLIR 1. The FLIR 1 is a plug-in module for a smartphone that leverages the fact that all the computing gubbins needed to drive an imager already exists inside the smartphone, so you can save money by just buying the thermal sensor and the lens array. This product goes for about $300 US, which is a lot more palatable. In fact, I have one here. This is a really well-engineered piece of kit, but it isn't without its problems. Firstly, and most annoyingly, it doesn't run off the smartphone battery. It has its own internal battery that must be kept charged. And even fully charged, it doesn't have a lot of runtime. FLIR says to expect as long as an hour, but my experience is more like 40 minutes. That makes using it a bit of a deliberate act because you have to make sure it's charged and then you have to plan what it is you're going to film ahead of time because the battery's winding down so quick. It makes it hard to use in a wait a second, let me grab the thermal sort of spur of the moment bit of diagnostic inspiration. Secondly, 
Fleer Teledyne really want this to be the gateway drug to their expensive imagers. So they've dumbed down the software to the bare minimum features they can get away with. And the resolution of the thermal imager itself is really coarse. It's enough to be usable and you can do good work with it, but it's just limited enough and just annoying enough to make you wish you had something with a less clunky physical form factor and more powerful analysis features. And you can absolutely get that if you spend 10 times more money. Enter Thermal Master and the Thor. With the Thor, you get the convenient handheld form factor. You get a higher IR resolution of 512 by 384 compared to the FLIR 1's 80 by 60. You get a claimed 10 hours of battery life, which seems truthful as I'm still running this one on the original factory charge you had when it showed up. You get all the extra analysis features like highlighting maximum and minimum temperatures on screen. It has a tripod adapter and the ability to automate, like taking snapshots at a time interval or starting recording on a trigger value. So if you have an intermittent problem, you can set this thing pointing at whatever it is you want to troubleshoot and leave it running. And if it sees a temperature over or under a threshold you set, it starts recording. This unit solves all the annoyances I have with the FLIR 1, and it costs 600 bucks US. Now that's still not exactly cheap. For a home gamer, that's still a significant purchase, about the cost of two DeWalt 20 volt max hand tools. That's not an impulse buy for most people, but it's cheap enough that it's doable for those who want to invest in having this capability, and unlike the FLIR 1, you get the full range of features, so you can extract the most from your investment. It's not dumbed down or nerfed, you don't feel like you only got half a tool. And the physical form factor, and the fact that it holds a charge forever, means I'm getting more use out of it because I can just grab it and start taking pictures when inspiration strikes. Here, I was having some part bed adhesion issues on a 3D printer, and I was wondering if maybe there was a dead spot in the heating element? Well, grab the Thor, turn it on, take a quick look, and now I can see that while the bed heater is working fine, there are some cool spots out on the edge of the bed that should be thought about when I'm laying prints out on the printer. I note as an aside that the bed was reading about 10 degrees Celsius cooler in the camera than what the thermal couple in the bed said it was at. That's an emissivity tuning at work, not necessarily a problem. Thermal Master doesn't try and hide the emissivity issue from you either. It's like talks about it on page three of the manual. This is a great device. Build quality is very good. The control interface is well laid out. The manual is very professional and properly translated. My review version came with this macro lens, which is apparently helpful for printed circuit board development as it gets the resolution fine enough to check individual traces on a PCB, but I'm not enough electrical engineer to need this, so I didn't test it. It even came with an SD card. As for things I didn't like, and honestly, I'm really reaching here, the housing has this soft touch, almost rubberized plastic, which is good in the hands, but I've owned products with a similar plastic, two laptops, where the rubber got gooey and sticky with age. I don't know if it's the same material, but I've learned to be wary of this sort of rubber soft touch coating. Also, the lens cover is made of the cheapest possible plastic, like a styrene. But come on, man, it's a lens cover. It's not structural, it's not a wear part. If you're trying to cost reduce this item to make a price point, it's an entirely reasonable material to make it out of. So it's not like this lens cover is a showstopper. Honestly, if you want a thermal imager, you don't want to deal with the hassles and limitations of the phone clip-on camera like the FLIR 1, and you want something you can just pull out of its case and start filming, this absolutely does the job. Honestly, it's hard to say more than that. This camera isn't going to tuck you in at night and make you breakfast in the morning. It's a thermal camera. It either takes thermal pictures or it doesn't. But I never ran into a limitation with the user interface. I never found a use case where I found myself saying, I wish it would do this, but it didn't or couldn't. And that's absolutely not the case with my FLIR 1, where I was running into its limitations all the time. So then, with the data I have available to me at this time, and based on this review product, I have absolutely no problem saying that if you are in the market for a handheld thermal camera, but don't want to shell out three grand for a FLIR Teledyne, the Thermal Master Thor is a great option. It works exactly as advertised at an entirely reasonable price for what you're getting. Special thanks goes out to Chris F for his support on Patreon. If you want to help support us making these videos, swing by patreon.com at FNR and sign on up. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.